Hello and welcome to this James the Bike Guy where today we're getting a chance to look at a very cool bike from Salsa, a bike that falls into their hardtail lineup but really stretches further to be a fun and playful bike without any of the weird spec sheet geometry that you get with some of the bikes that might be trying just a touch too hard. Instead, we've got the Salsa Timberjack which is available in 29er or uniquely, the one we're looking at today has the 27 and a half inch plus size tires, which is relatively tough to come across in the marketplace of 2024. So in this video, we're gonna go into the features and designs of this bike. We'll talk about who and what this bike is for. And of course, we'll finish it off with exactly what it weighs. All right, talking Salsa Timberjack. This particular Timberjack, it is unique in being able to combine a few things that just are not readily available across the marketplace, but that really make for a cool and fun hardtail. Now Salsa is a little bit smaller brand, granted they're owned by QBP, which is a major parts distributor in, our, in North America. However, Salsa makes up a small portion of the bike market, but they do really find a way to come in and do the adventure and mountain biking niche in ways that most other brands don't. Now this bike that we have, this Timberjack, came out as we were seeing some of the Diamondback, some of the Commensals, your Trek Roscoe, all really come into their own as some of the more playful and fun hardtails. A bike that you would be able to take full-on trail riding without worrying about uh, overstressing the bike or outgrowing it. And Salsa has evolved their Timberjack, now in its latest incarnation, to utilize an aluminum frame to help with durability as well as keep the cost low but evolve the hardtail where it's gonna come factory with 130 millimeters of front suspension. However, the frame is rated all the way up to 150 millimeters. Now that means that you could have the bike be pretty rowdy in the front end with plenty of travel such as this bike has, but it also added what I think is maybe one of the most key features of this bike, and that would be their alternator 2.0 dropouts. Now this dropout may not look like much, but it's replaceable with a few different styles of dropouts, including ones for different axle dimensions. Granted this bike in 2024, as it should, is coming with boost 15 by 110 up front, and then out back, the wheel is set up with 12 by 148 millimeter boost. However, these do come in different axle spacings in case you want to run a different set of wheels. But maybe the biggest and most important party trick of this axle is that it allows for 17 millimeters of movement fore and aft. Now you might be asking yourself, why would you want that? Well, really, I think there's a couple of major reasons. The first would be the ability to run this as a single speed. Because that's adjustable, you can set this up with a single speed uh, without needing to run a singulator out back. You could just tension the chain by adjusting those dropouts back to snug everything up. The second thing that it really allows you to do is it allows you to totally change the handling characteristics of this bike. One of the most major ways to really change how a bike feels is changing the relation to the front center, basically the front part of the bike down to where your pedals are versus the rear center or chainstay link. Now in this case, the bike is set up where it can run a 420 millimeter chainstay all the way up to 437 millimeters. But finally, the other place where this really comes into play is going to be in tire and wheel size. So you'll see here we've got some 27.5 by 2.8 inch recons out back and then Minion DHF tires out front. But as you may know, it's been a few years since the 27.5 plus tire size, which would be anything from a 2.6 to say a 3.2 inch wide tire, really has had a hold in the hardtail market. But the benefit of being able to have that 2.8 inch tire is that this got a wider balance point. You also have a much taller sidewall compared to traditional 27.5, say in the 2.3, to be able to allow the tire to grip and have more traction, but also give you a much wider envelope of capability out of the bike, making up for a little bit of rider skill. Now this bike is also available in a 29er, and part of the way that it's able to do that is of course with that alternator dropout. So you can change the geo, be able to get that 29er in here, and you can run a 29 inch tire from 2.1 all the way up to a 2.6. So you combine that adjustability with the ability 
to change the fork from the 130 as it comes factory here, all the way up to 150 mil travel front end, giving you a pretty wide range of usage of this bike, everything from a single speed to trail bike like it is, to even more of a cross country racer with some 29ers and focusing on a touch of speed. Now the geometry, as the bike sits in the 27.5 plus geo, you've got a head tube angle of 66.4 degrees, which is reasonably slack and modern. You've got a seat tube angle of 75.1 degrees, which would put you in a powerful position for climbing. And then a reach in a size medium of 453.6 millimeters, giving the bike a healthy front end. And then of course that 420 to 430 millimeter chainstay length. The bike being aluminum and from Salsa means of course we're gonna get lots of mounts. So we've got a bento box mount up top. You've got a triplicate mount on the down tube. Even in the size small, you've got a seat tube water bottle mount, and then of course a under the down tube mount as well. That gives you all sorts of room to be able to, you know, put some gear, put some packs, whatever you might want to be able to get a little additional riding. And when it's paired up with things like the dropper seat post, which is handlebar operated, all you do is push down and up the post goes, as well as the sleek internal cable routing should make for a pretty fun and enjoyable bike. Now this one will come in several different spec levels, but of course what we have in front of us is the top spec version on sale in 2024, which is the Timberjack SLX. And the SLX Timberjack has a retail price of $2,099. However, Salsa has been running this pretty much for the full season at a much more affordable $1,699, which brings the bike to be, at least in my opinion, quite competitive against the other ones that are out there. Most namely, something like a Specialized Fuse or a Trek Roscoe. The Salsa at $1,699 will definitely give them a run for its money with the parts spec. So speaking of parts, being that it's named the SLX, probably comes as no surprise that we've got an SLX rear derailleur running through a 10 to 51 tooth rear cassette, which is going to give a nice super wide 510% range out back. Up front is going to be a Shimano aluminum crankset. This is going through a threaded bottom bracket. It's a one by up front, so a single ring, in this case, a 30 tooth up front does come with some plastic Welgo pedals, something that, uh, well, you should probably upgrade when you get this to make it a bit more trail worthy. And then up front is the RockShock 35 Silver. Now this has a 44 millimeter offset and it is set up where you're able to adjust the lockout all the way locked out to open. And on the non-drive side, you've got a spot where underneath this cap is a Schrader valve to be able to add or remove air and get the bike dialed in. And speaking of dialing in that fork, it is compatible with air tokens, different spacers to change the ramping. And just above, I'll have a link to a video explaining how that works, as well as the RockShock 35 can be extended to 150 millimeters with a replacement air spring that you can get installed with pretty much just a 50 hour service. So up on the handlebars, of course, we're talking an alloy bar, a race face handlebar on this one. In some cases you might get a salsa bar to go up with the salsa stem but on the left hand side it's going to be that shimano lever operating our trans x dropper seat post a shimano deor shifter which thumb button goes to an easier gear index finger or thumb uh, up top will put you into a harder gear and then some shimano mt500 hydraulic disc brakes these disc brakes are clamping down on a 180 millimeter front rotor and 160 millimeter rear with a two piston caliper. So now that we've gone over all the features and designs of this bike, it is time to find out what it weighs. And the actual weight of the Salsa Timberjack size small SLX comes in and weighs 32.6 pounds. Thanks for joining me to check out the 2024 Salsa Timberjack SLX. Go ahead and let me know what you think of this bike. Personally, I find it pretty fun and exciting, but I'm curious what you think down in the comments below. While you're at it, be sure to hit subscribe and browse the channel to see more videos like this to check out as well.